<laughs> nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti. Luigi, look! It's from Bowser. Dear pesky plumbers, the Koopalings and I have taken over the Mushroom Kingdom. The princess is now a permanent guest at one of my seven Koopa hotels. I dare you to find her if you can't. We gotta find the princess. And you gotta help us. If you need instructions on how to get through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book. Welcome to another episode of the 4 o'clock game. As we continue with the uh, the NES trilogy on Super Mario Brothers, I will play all three games. Last time I played Super Mario 1, the first Mario game ever made on the NES, which has become a masterpiece. Actually, I finally managed to beat the game um, to rescue Princess Peach and actually beat the game. So, uh, enough already. Well, this is what I did my playthrough of that game. Thanks to Opryman6287. From who did a, a who did a playthrough of his Super Mario Brothers game for the NES, which he did not get past to the final bat, the final level of the game. So I actually beat the game. So anyway, it's enough already. And now today on this episode of the Four O'clock Game, I'm going to present a game that I actually had as a sequel to probably the first Super Mario Brothers game. And guess what? I got this. Back in 1988 or 89, whatever, whatever I call it, when I was like 10 years old at the time, I was at a store called Sears, which was in, uh, which was on Nostrand Avenue in Brooklyn. Actually, I was browsing around, and guess what? I finally pick up a copy of the game, and guess what it is? You guessed it. This is Super Mario Brothers 2 for the NES, and this game came out in 1988, and it's pre and it and it's presented to us by. You guessed it, Nintendo. This game was actually based off a, a Japanese any a, a game for the uh, Nintendo, which was on the Nintendo Famicom called Doki Doki Panic. Yeah, it's got some similarities in the in the Japanese version of Doki Doki Panic. There was some a lot of stuff that came out around. Yeah, Doki Doki Panic came out first, but then Super Mario Bros. 2 came out a year later. They just copied Doki Doki Panic in the game. So, yeah, due to the absence of the Goombas and the uh, Koopas, the Bowsers, and uh, a whole bunch of other characters, it will not return until the next game, Super Mario Bros. 3. But, um, anyways, which will be on my next episode of the 4 o'clock game after I'm playing Super Mario Bros. 2. This game is actually, uh, after, after, actually, I first played this game, I actually beat the game after I beat the final level of the game after like after 20 years ago, over 20 year plus years, I after I beat this game, it was pretty good. But this, a lot of people think, uh, a lot of people hate the second game because it's an underrated NES classic. But anyways, it's a it's a very very simple good game. But a lot of a lot of game critic reviewers hated the game. But um, I remember that when it first came out on the Nintendo Power back in like 1988 when it first came out as the first issue of Nintendo Power. Well. Anyways, yeah, they showed all the all the bunch of map screens. It gives you a whole bunch of uh, maps to go throughout the game in the first half of it. It's pretty cool if you like Super Mario Brothers 2 or anything. If you like this game, um, 
let me point this out. The, for those of you uh, who haven't saw our rant back in 2008 about the uh, about Doki Doki Panic and Super Mario Brothers 2, thanks to Sin Electrics for this uh, video about it, I will play the audio of this clip right now. Take it away, Sin Electrics. Hey everybody, it's me, Andy, and I'm addressing a problem that I've run into lately. The Doki Doki Panic and Super Mario Willers 2 controversy has been out for a long time, but if you're not sure what it is, then I'll give you a brief explanation. Doki Doki Panic, a game for the Famicom Disk System, was released in Japan and Europe. It was based loosely off an anime series at the time, and didn't do so hot. It was about two kids being kidnapped by an evil lizard king named Mamu, or Bort as we would come to know here in the U.S. Super Mario Bros. 2 debuted in Japan as a similar game to the first Super Mario Bros. and was a bit more challenging. So challenging that Japan didn't think Americans could handle it. So Nintendo decided to take Doki Doki Panic, slap Mario characters all over it, and package it as the second Mario Bros. game in the U.S. And since then, people haven't been able to stop bitching about it since they found out. This is my problem. Since people have found out about the switcheroo that Nintendo has pulled, they are starting to demean Super Mario Bros. 2 and call it one of the worst Mario Bros. games ever created. Time. Oh, I can hear the fanboys freaking out now! Yeah, the US Mario 2 was a pretty cool game, but our main problem was that you were never actually playing Mario 2 to begin with. You were playing Japan's Doki Doki Panic, just with Mario's grill slapped all on it. Thanks to Stuttering Craig at Screw Attack for the for this top ten video games ever. Back to the program. In fact, I think us in the U.S. got an even better deal out of it because there were a few things improved from Doki Doki Panic, such as overall design and animation. Just look at this albatross animation. Also, the character selection screen. You weren't able to pick the characters in between each level like you could with Super Mario Bros. 2. In fact, with Doki Doki Panic, you had to play the same game all the way through with every character to be able to reach the ending. Although it was easier because the Famicom Disk System did save its games to the disc, but even still, I think it was a lot better to be able to choose between each level. Think back to when you were a kid. Wasn't Super Mario Bros. 2 fun? My uncle and I spent hours playing it over and over again, using warp zones and kicking Mort's fat, scaly ass. Why has that changed now? In my honest opinion, I think the change with Super Mario Bros. 2 was a great thing, because it really defined the Mario characters more than Super Mario Bros. 1 did, and would eventually lead to Super Mario Bros. 3 which is one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah, more on that on the next episode of the Four Claw Game. So shame, shame on you for discouraging Doki Doki Panic as a solid Mario game. Perhaps you need to play Super Mario Bros. 2 again. And stop whining, you fuck nuts. I'm Andy, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Thank you, Andy, for, for giving us a rant about the Super Mario Brothers. Sorry about the cursing here, but in, in the video. So I decided to bleep it out a bit so I can do a little little bit of a playthrough here. So I just do a, a clean version of it. So um, anyways, um, that's all I got for now. But uh, we'll talk about this until I will be playing Super Mario Brothers 2 as the 4 o'clock game rolls on right after this important message.